this is embarrassing to do this. I'm not used to doing it with somebody else in the room. Okay, so hey y'all, the other day I had mentioned about doing some cooking on some potato uh, soup slash casserole, and there was a couple of people that wanted me to do this, so I am going to do this today. So, the ingredients that you're going to need is you can use sliced potatoes, diced potatoes, whatever kind you want, and I normally buy two cans because I'm only doing half of this recipe and trust me half of this recipe is plenty it's if you double it unless you're feeding like eight to ten people we always have leftovers and we always have leftovers that get thrown away so I always buy two 15 ounce can I would prefer sliced and they did not have the cream of potato soup in the size that I needed, so I had to get the 13.3 ounce, and I bought two of them, which I'm not going to use both of these. I will use about one and a half of them, and then you are going to need a 16 ounce block of Velveeta cheese and a pint of heavy whipping cream, and literally that is all that you're going to do. So I like to use my casserole dish. I have already sprayed it because it will stick. You are gonna preheat your oven to 400. It'll take about 30 to 45 minutes, just depending on the consistency. It will get thicker as it stands. So I've already sprayed with this. I'm going to take my pan and I will just dance. Just, I do all the mixing in the casserole dish so that I don't have to dirty up a bunch of dishes, so I'll dump both cans of potatoes in there. If I can get that one out. Okay, that's done. Now I'm going to add the cream of potato into here, and it is very thick. So I usually have to use a pretty big spoon to get all this out. And I figured I could do two videos in one because since this will take a little bit to cook, while it's cooking, I can go and do my makeup brush cleaning and have those done and ready to use for tomorrow. Okay, done that. I'm just going to throw all these cans away. Okay, now we are going to add, since I bought the one pint because they did not have a half a pint. I'm just going to add what I had left from last time into the bowl. Okay, so there's that. Now, what you want to do is you want to take your huge chunk of Velveeta cheese and you're just going to Cut it up into slices and I just kind of do whatever size slice just to make it melt easier. I'm actually going to go ahead and stir this mixture up a little bit. And this is one of the easiest things that I have ever made. You can make it the night before, put it in the fridge, reheat it for the next day, do your cornbread the same exact way, and then you have that ready as well. So I just cut the cheese into slices, pull it into slices, and throw it 
on the top. And then I just kind of, uh, I'll leave about three fourths of the block. And I will use that after I mix the cheese up. So I just pinch the cheese into pieces and just kind of throw it on top. Also making cornbread. I'm not making homemade cornbread tonight. I'm just doing the Jiffy corn muffin mix, which I think makes a pretty good. I don't do it as muffins. I just put it all in there as a cornbread. And I actually will bake this with my cornbread. Put them both in the oven at the same time. That way it makes it a whole lot easier on me that way I don't have to wait I hate having to put one thing in the oven and wait on another thing to go in the oven so I will put both things in the oven to make that a little bit easier on myself okay so now that we have our mixture we got our cheese all on top want to mix some of that cheese in together and get everything mixed up a little bit. You're just going to stand back there and watch me. Hey, and your face is red now. I'm hot. I'm having some type of hot flash or something. Which it's hot over here at this oven. But my face, I can feel that it is warm. Okay, got that. Ugh, I always keep something to... Ugh. That cheese will definitely stick like crazy to your hands. It leaves a weird consistency left on your fingers for sure. So we have a mixture about ugh, ready to go in the oven. But I'm going, I will go ahead and put the, oh, it does leave a gross consistency on your fingers. I do have to say Velveeta is just one of those, oh, thick, consisted, and it always gets under my nails, thick, consisted cheeses. But it's amazing. Oh, okay. Let's throw this in the garbage and put this in the sink. So now we have our mix ready to go into, I don't even need this, ready to go in the oven. It's going to look something like that, but the whole thing will of course turn yellow and it is very good. Okay, now we're going to do our cornbread mix. Not doing no. This one. So I have my glass pan. I do round. I use. I'll let me set the timer until I put the cornbread in. Okay. I just spray it really good because I don't like anything sticking. And this is not butter flavor. This is just regular cooking spray, and I just got the Jiffy corn mix. Oh, well, that's stuck in the box. Just dump it into our bowl, and you need an egg, egg, and one-third cup of milk which I have already prepared everything. And I normally don't get 
my blender out for making this because there's no sense in making such a big mess out of that when just stir it and don't have such a don't take as long anyway so I really don't see the point of getting out the mixer just to hand mix this it's just as easy doing it this way plus get a workout pump those muscles up okay just like to make sure it's good and mixed that and of course I would let that go out. Okay, I just need a little bit. Just mix it up until there's no little granulates in here. And ugh, wipe off. I can't stand a mess. And I'm the type I clean as I go along because I cannot stand a mess plus guess what that means after dinner there's not as big of a mess to clean up which I like so get that off my thing put it down in my cup now just take it and scrape it off into my dish. I'm also going to fry some spam with this when it gets closer to being done because it only takes like five to ten minutes to do that. So I don't want to start that quite yet. Okay. We have that done. Another good tip is anytime you're baking a cake or cornbread and this is going to be extremely loud, if you will, I'll do it on this table so it's not so loud. Just kind of pick it up and tap it a few times and it will get all your air bubbles out. We're going to put that in beside of our potato soup slash casserole and it takes 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm going to put this stuff, do we put that in the trash? Please. Okay. I'm going to fill Just in case, I'll go ahead and wipe off my area and I will put, I'm going to rinse this off in the sink really quickly. So now you get out the wooden spoon. So you want to stir it about every, I would say, five, ten minutes. Check on it, stir it. That seems to be the easiest way that I have figured out to do it. And we will leave the spam for later. I am going to go ahead and get out a pot for the corn. And we 
choose to use this card. I wanted, I think this is the best type corn that you can get is Libby's. It just has a really good taste to it, especially when you add butter to cook it in. And of course, we love butter. About a tablespoon or two, sometimes more. Just depends. Okay, now I will go ahead and that out and let's get some butter. No particular type. Get my knives back where they were at. Go ahead and get a tablespoon for this. So I use about that much. It's a little over a tablespoon, but I like my corn buttery with a little salt and then pepper afterwards. Okay, so now that we've got that done. We will wait. I'm going to move the cute stuff off the stove. I love this little solar light. Cute. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and spray my skillet with, oop, with the canola oil so that it'll be ready for the spam. Does not really matter how much you use. We will just take a peek. It is starting to melt. It usually takes a little bit. Sometimes you have to cook it a little longer. It's just an eyeball thing. So now we can move on and start cleaning our makeup brushes. And this is an easy way I have found to do it. I actually picked this up at the Dollar General. It's supposed to be a kitchen tool holder, but I just thought that would be cute to put bigger makeup brushes in. Normally, I have them in something like this with, let me set this up so it would be easier for me. Okay. So, I did have sand at one point in time. Sand is extremely messy. Gets on your brushes, makes a mess. Don't recommend it. Normally I don't have this many in here, but I went ahead and threw my eyeshadow and eye brushes in here just so they all would be together. But these little rocks and really help to hold the brushes in place so that they don't flop and fly everywhere. So when I clean them, what I will do is take my scissors out of there for one. And it works for beauty blenders too. We'll take, these are the ones that are really dirty. So these are the ones that I'm going to clean. The ones that aren't dirty, we're not worried about those. So I always use this and then I will wash it back out while my brushes are drying. So I'll just take my cup and pour that in there. Okay, the easiest way I have found to clean these makeup brushes, you are going to find somewhere to put these. Mm, okay, just going to lay them right there for now. I double the recipe just because that's how I prefer. So I will use this face again. This I have no idea. Got it at the Dollar General for $3 is all I know and I like it. So, apple cider vinegar. I will take my tablespoon and I will do two tablespoons and put it in to the container. So, I always double. Most of the time, I use white vinegar, but since I am out of white vinegar, I forgot to pick it up when I went to the store. 
just because this is so much stronger, which is why I prefer not to use it because it is kind of strong. My Ajax. Somebody took my Ajax. Or you can use Dawn. Just any, I need my dish detergent, thank you. Just any type of, and this is in real life for real. And since I'm doubling it, normally you would do half a teaspoon, but I double. Ajax, I prefer to use, I know Dawn's a little bit easier on things, but I prefer to use Ajax because it does wash away bacteria and it is really good on cutting grease. So I will do one full tablespoon of Ajax. Like I said, you can use Dawn, but I just prefer the Ajax. Okay, rinse that out. I like to rinse everything out as I go, so that's done, but this will have to be put in the dishwasher regardless. And I didn't use the teaspoon one, so I wanted to put that one in there. So you're going to have a formula about like that, and I'm going to fill it about up to here with hot water. You can use one cup. Roughly, that's what it would equal out to. And then I will just take a bottom of a makeup brush and stir it up and mix it up together. So I'm getting the water hot. Ow, hot, 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 hot. Very hot. Okay. Okay, so now I have that in there. I'm going to just take the bottom of a makeup brush and Spin this around real good to make sure it is mixed up. Okay, now we're going to start dropping our brushes downward into our mixture. This really, really deep cleans brushes. I have, and I will even put my beauty blender in here and just kind of squish it down in there to the bottom. Big brushes coming. Just kind of arrange them, get them down in there. You always want to make sure it's above the line. Okay, we're getting them in there now. So, you leave these sitting for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then I recommend cold water instead of hot water. So let me just kind of push the beauty blender into there to get it to absorb. That way it'll stay down in there. So now that we have all of our brushes upside down, you can already see the water's getting pretty filthy. And this will be absolutely disgusting by the time I go pull these out, I'll rinse this out again, lay them out to dry, I'll rinse my container, and then I will always put my rocks back in here. I love these so much over sand, just because when you stick stuff in it, it don't move. I mean, you have all your brushes flopping over. This is just a much better way I have figured out to hold my brushes in place. So, not sand. Sand is so messy. So we'll leave those sit and let me find my watch. It is now 6.35, so about 6.45-ish we'll do that. And I found the cutest idea for storing your stuff if because jars, yes, they're great, they're amazing, but most of the time they're not cute. I actually found these, like tea, it was like tea, coffee, sugar. I have not finished this one yet. I go and I buy twine. Hot glue gun, hot glue sticks. Prefer the jumbo hot glue gun. Works a lot better, works a lot faster. And I will take the string and start at the bottom, do a little line of glue, place this down, hold it, and this is time consuming, 
So I would recommend if you want to do something like this, or you could just do a specific design, do the top, do the bottom, leave the middle, do gems on it. But it stores stuff to where people really can't see all your items, and I like it like that a whole lot better. And since my bathroom is done in light houses, it matches my theme in here. And if you're into crafting, I recommend you do that. So now, let's go. Oh, our brushes are even getting their clean on. I'm going to take the Ajax back in here and the apple cider vinegar. Set it down. These need to go in the dishwasher. Good. Throw those in the dishwasher. Put this back in the cabinet before I forget. Okay, let's check on the potato casserole. See how it is going. Oh, she's bubbling. She is bubbling. So we need to go ahead and we need to stir this mixture up a little bit. And our cornbread is getting almost done. So I just take a wooden spoon and just kind of dig in here. Get that cheese and everything really mixed up. Believe it or not, this is going to be really yellow by the time all this cheese gets mixed up and it is amazing and simple and this will be lunch or dinner or tomorrow night or tomorrow day whichever so it's looking pretty good cornbread's looking pretty good still needs a little bit longer so I will go ahead and turn my corn on that way and get this butter melt and I'm just going to kind of slosh it in there at the moment just to spread it out so it'll melt a lot faster. Okay, these are what these are made for but mine does not fit in there. This particular spoon does not but believe it or not that's what those are made to do. They are made to hold your spoons and your utensils that you're using but these are odd spoons, so they do not do that. So, we've got our skillet ready. We've got four minutes and ten seconds left on our cornbread. And check out this water. Like, it's pretty nasty at the moment definitely pretty nasty at the moment and I will always grab a towel that I don't normally care to bathe with Let me we have so many towels why nobody uses this many Let me grab one ah okay got a towel holy cow my cabinet of Stuff, and that's not even all the towels. Half of them are dirty. We have a lot. So I got my towel. And I have, I will usually plug up this little heater to kind of put, and I have a little stool that I use. And I'll just kind of spread my towel out over top of this stool, like so. And when my brushes are done, we're going to lay them on here. We're going to turn on our heater to help them dry. So it is getting pretty, pretty gross in here. But you can clearly tell these brushes are getting, that was actually a blush brush and it was pretty disgusting. But they're definitely getting clean. And they've only got a few more minutes and we can pull them out, rinse them off, lay them out to dry. 
By then the cornbread should be done. I'm doubling in this video. I'm killing two birds with one stone, that's for sure. In this one. And let's check in. Uh, kinda. It's starting to at least bubble real good. But the cornbread's getting closer to getting done. It's got a minute and 58 seconds. Got the corn started. And I think we could probably go ahead and honestly get this span that we're going to fry cut up. That way, I hate opening these cans, it's so dangerous. That way, that will be done. We can get that fried, cut up, over with. Cutting board. air holes to get this to come out. You can if you want to, it doesn't matter to me. We don't like them, we don't like our slices cut real thick or real thin either, but I do not like spam roll. I think it is absolutely disgusting when it is raw and it has a funky smell but we do like it when it is cooked it has a completely different and I never add salt on top when cooking this because if you do that you're gonna have some high high cholesterol because this stuff is salty as all get out on its own so, I have cut our pieces up, different, some people like it thick, some people like it thin, we cut them up, we are not going to add salt. Just do, oh, did not see that, about burnt that, about caught that on fire, did not see that my rag, okay, that is letting me know that the cornbread is ready. To be taken out. So let me stir our corn real quick since it is getting the butter melted. And I will go ahead and stir our potato casserole too. Oh, yes, that cornbread is done. Done, done, done. So that to me, I'm going to actually, I don't want to set it on my table. So I'm going to set it over here, let that cool. I'm going to stir that. Ooh, I got span under my nail. Okay, get to my, now we can kind of scoop this more to the center. I'm just going to take my spoon again and give this a good stir. Oh, hush, I know. Okay, we still got a little bit on that. You will know when this is done, when your potatoes get to where you can take a spoon or a fork and press on them, and if they cut easily, then that means that it is done. And if you like the consistency, it's done. If the potatoes are too hard to cut in half, not done. Not done. Like I said, 30, 45 minutes. It just depends on the thickness of the potatoes. Takes a minute for the cheese to melt. All that jazz. But at least our cornbread is done. And oh, I just love the smell. Like... It just smells up the house, and it's amazing smell. I really love the smell. It's like a potato soup, potato casserole. Like, it's in between. But I always like to make cornbread with it because I like to take my cornbread, and instead of eating it on the side, I will break up my cornbread and put it all into a bowl and mix it up. And, oh, ugh. 
too bad you can't taste through cameras because it is very, 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 very good. Mm. But the cornbread is nice and golden. So I'm just going to kind of, while it's nice and hot and the spam's ready to be fried, take me a knife. I got my helper. I'm going to fry the spam. I don't fry it very, very correctly, apparently. I never get it. Oh, hot. So our makeup brushes should be about done in the bathroom and ready to be come on cut there we go now we've got our cornbread nice and cut so that's ready to go I do not consider this not to be dirty now let me get let me back you one second let me check this eyeball it. No, still bubbling. Okay, now to the bathroom. Hmm. Yeah, they're looking. Let's check out. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Let's see. I had a brush that was real gross. <laughs> this was actually the color pinkish red, believe it or not. And now it's back to its white and blue tip. Yes, yes, yes. This was a foundation brush, and the top of it is like a whitish cream color, so that has definitely got cleaned out. So we've got our brushes. Now, what I like to do is use, and bar soap is really good to use. As well if you don't have anything else but like I said apple cider vinegar Dawn or Ajax soap with some hot water let them soak in your mixture for 10 15 minutes you can see how nasty this stuff is clearly gross so now I'm going to dump this out into the sink oh oh that is nasty that is really nice. Ugh. Ugh. That's gross. Okay. Let me get hot water. That's got to be rinsed down. Ugh. Okay. Let me lower this now. And kind of turn it towards my sink. Okay, so now what I do is I get the brushes out one by one with cold water, not hot water. And I just rinse, and I'll just take my hand and fluff them and squeegee them a little bit. And if your brush did not, you can actually, if you wanted to do it, leave them in there. If they're really dirty bad bad dirty which they should never get that dirty but if they do happen to be that badly dirty i will take bar soap not this one but i have my own bar soap for that and rub my brush on that and get any excess that did not come off off so that brush and then you squeegee it into the form that the brush was squeegee all your water out and then this one just kind of fluffs back up on its own. And I have a, let me grab it. I use this gigantic stool with a towel on it. And I set it in the floor, lay my brushes. And with little brushes, I will grab several at a time and run them under cold water because we have already put them in hot water to clean them. So now we go to cold water. And I have several foundation brushes, let me tell you. It absolutely, you always wanna make sure you keep the form of how your brush was. And squeegee it out that way. 
You don't want to squeegee it out into the direction, which I always have to glue that. I need to glue that one back. That one's been used for years. Do not squeegee them out into a different direction than how your brushes were formed or else. It will can mess up the bristles, can mess up the brushes. You don't want you pay too much for brushes. So therefore you don't want to mess them up. So this was a powder brush. I'm gonna squeegee it, get the excess water, and then I just take my finger and kind of fluff it back a little to the size that it was. Put it down, have another brush that's like that. Cold water just helps after the hot water has been in there to clean them. The cold water is not nearly as harsh on your bristles as scalding hot water would be to clean them. So, fluff it, kind of back up. Try to get all the water I can out of these. Makes it easier to dry, which like I said, I have a little plug-in heater. I try to do all my big ones first, that way I can use, grab a ton of little ones to do this. And you can just kind of wiggle your brush, take it, twirl it on your hand. I mean, most of, it gets majority of the product off. You're just rinsing out the rest of the dirtiness out of it. I've never really, and I've never really had to go back in after putting my brushes in that mixture. I've never really had to go back and clean them again. Normally that's completely out. I'm just kind of getting the dirtiness where it's soaked in out. So that was a stipple brush. This is actually the color the brush was. And I'm just rinsing out the excess that was left in it. So drain it, squeegee out, don't pull, just squeeze, fluff your finger back up, kind of how the brush was, and let it to dry. And I think that is, well, I have a couple more big ones, but these aren't too gigantic. This pink is how this brush was. This brush was actually completely brown, covered in bronzer, because this is a contour brush by Wet n Wild. It was completely disgusting. Like, do not go buy those power cleaners that clean brushes. I have seen it destroy too many. Now it's back to just being pink. This, one of these was a highlighting brush, one of these was a blush brush, so one of them had a pinkish tint, the other one was completely covered in blush, and now they're back. I mean, I'm not even having to really struggle to rinse any type of, or go back in and clean the excess because it's pretty much already done. This is actually a face mask brush, so this one gets cleaned out quite a bit. But I like to do that to sanitize it. Now we're on to our smaller brushes. So I can just kind of grab several at a time. And clean them out real good. Now this one, for some reason, I do not know why, I have no idea why, but this one wet and wild brush, it is horrible for staining. Yes, it is supposed to be pink on the top. So this is what I'm, this is the part that I'm going to show you where it did not get it completely clean. Let me grab one of the I think some of the best things to use are these little soaps. And I did have one that, and I will wet it a little, wet the brush, and just kind of swirl it. 
a little bit and you can tell I'm getting some nastiness on there but some of the wet and wild brushes don't clean very well like that so now we'll run it back under the cold water and this was a brush that is pink on top so it had purple in it and a maroon color in it that would not come out now we're back to just being pink and white so the soap does help but normally with my other brushes I don't have to go in and I don't have to do that with them but for some reason with that particular wet and wild brush nothing wants to come clean on it and our potato casserole should be about done so should our spam that we are cooking okay we're getting this is I don't do this a lot because I will show you why. I try to keep my brushes as clean as possible. See I can grab a wad now that I have smaller brushes and I will use the palm of my hand under the water and just rub them in circles to get those cleaned out. I even put my little spoolies in there just because there's always some type of residue on them. I'm going to squeeze you these out. But for some reason, that one wet and wild one, this wet and wild one, that's fine. But my other, that one, I don't know what it is about it. It just, now these brushes are nice and clean. Down there, I've got two left, and then I have my beauty blender. This is my Milani one for my eye pomade, and this is a highlighter brush that came from Wish, and I am obsessed. If you want good brushes for a really good cheap price, I think I paid three bucks for these, and it came in like a 20-piece set, and they're called Vander, and it didn't come with any really huge brushes, but it did come with, you know, the, and this I use for my hard candy, um, eyeshadow primer, so you can see, and my eyeshadow primer does have a color to it, so any brush that I use for brushing that on, I prefer using it with a brush, with your finger, it doesn't seem to do as good, so you can see that having to bring off the excess of that. But that's only two brushes that I've had to kind of go back and go over. So that's pretty good for God knows how many brushes are down here. Ooh, let me rinse my bar of soap off. Now for the beauty blender. I'm gonna go ahead, look. Do you see that nastiness coming out of that? Ooh, 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 ooh. So I just rub the beauty blender gently because this is a Morphe one and it's my favorite one and this one you do have to go in with your soap with this one just because it is a sponge it does absorb and get deeper down until we're bringing that off very well and this is the quickest thing to dry believe it or not this is the quickest one that dries okay I'm just gonna you have to squeeze oh Ugh, the nastiness that comes out of these things like there is so much like you have to squeeze several times just because there is so much foundation that gets into these beauty blenders down in to the sponge that it takes a little more patience with these which is why I don't I kind of try to stick to one one end for and then the other end for like contour and baking that way that's one beauty blender and not 15 to clean because they're the hardest thing I've ever cleaned. They don't, I mean, they're not hard. A little darker for me. Okay. So, my husband picking the spam while the, now we back to our red, pretty red, beauty blender. Make sure it is completely squeezed out. So that is ready. 
to dry off. Now our container is kind of gross. So we're gonna clean it out as well. Let it dry out before I put the rocks back in it. To, I've got my rocks in a little dish. These hold makeup brushes so good I can't go on. The sand is just too messy. I tried it. It gets out all over the counter. It can get into your brushes. You don't want that going into your eyeball for sure. So I'll let this, I'll walk the perimeter off, the outside off, and make sure I've got all that out. I'll leave it sitting here to dry. And I am gonna use this. This is so cute. Okay, <laughs> again, kitchen tool holder. But with that, it's not not cute for some of your makeup brush holders like to use for that. Like I just thought that was so cute and three bucks at the Dollar General. Like I feel like you can't beat that, especially with it having a bottom on it. I just thought that was so cute. So I am gonna use that. I need to wipe my hands off. So now, let me throw the soap away. Close that. So I have them lined up as such on a towel and I'm going to move them over here. I love this little stool for this. I'll move them right here in the floor. I have a little heater in here. I'll plug it up, point it oh, not too close to the brushes, just kind of near them. Don't want to catch nothing on fire. And that will put out heat towards my brushes. And there is many, many here. And I like to rearrange kind of like up and down that way there's not several stuck on top of each other so I do like to go like that one needs to be down the spoolies don't take no time but that is how I like to clean that's a deep clean normally when I clean brushes I'm using this it's no water clean sweep has the little sponge in it you just we will pretend this is a brush you just rub it like all in there and it takes all of the powder not for creams I found this at Marshall's for $3.99 they do have these on wish but like I said before you're only gonna get not even half of this size and you have to wait a month two dollars I'll pay four dollars to have it now but this thing works amazingly I have several friends going to buy this so I know around here they're probably going to be out of stock in this area because everybody is going to pick those up now the rocks I will clean every now and then just with hot water run them through a strainer clean them in that way but now let's check while our brushes are drying. Like I said, I'm killing two birds with one stone this time around since we have to wait 30, 45 minutes on our potato casserole. Anyway, I'm gonna check and make sure the cornbread is... Okay, cornbread has cooled off, so we have that done. Now our potato casserole, we need to... Oh, okay. Might as well take fork and just normally I pull find a potato a good decent size one to pull up to the side yeah. and if it easily cuts then you know you're right at being done and we're just going to let it sit in there for a few more minutes. Our span is getting done. Our corn is getting done. So we have everything getting done at about the same time besides the cornbread for some reason. I'm not really sure on that. But it got done several minutes faster than everything else did. waiting on that to get done. <laughs> it's fun. 
but my husband normally fries the spam. I don't normally do it, and I don't like spam not fried. I think it has a, and any time I put my hands in water, I get the driest hands ever, and my daughter got me this for Christmas, and this stuff is absolutely amazing. For dry hands and lord knows i've got some horrible dry hands it's like anytime i touch water my hands just get i can't stand it i can't stand to touch paper it just has the grossest feeling to me when my hands are dry like that but i put this on usually every night after doing my moisturizer and stuff like that just because it's so thick and it keeps my hands so moisturized throughout the night Blue shirt guy. Get that off there. Is I can't get it off there. I'm doing something right now. Look. That's all swollen up there. Oh. It's warm. You were not supposed to hit that that hard. I didn't have pain. She needs the pain. So we're going to check on our casserole again. Potato casserole, potato soup. I've heard it called everything. A lot of people call it potato soup. But it is delicious. And it's so flipping easy. Like, can't get no easier. Can't get no easier than mixing some stuff in a pot or one casserole dish so that you don't have to make a mess with several dishes. Oh, yeah, that's getting real good and done. And you could probably add whatever else you wanted to add into it as long as you pretty much do it like this you'd pretty much be able to add if you wanted to throw we have bacon bits that we throw on top once it does get out of the oven and into our bowls we will put bacon bits in our bowl let me find a good size potato Oh yeah, it is done. You can cut through it. So, it's done. Anytime the potatoes are soft enough, that pretty much goes with anything. When your potatoes are soft enough to cut through, it's done. So, we have it, and it is done, and good and bubbling. Ooh. to be washed. So, there we have it. Our potato casserole. We will put it in a bowl. We will normally throw cornbread in with it, mix it up, put bacon bits on top. Our corn is done. Our spam fried is done. Our cornbread's done. Now we are ready to have a very good dinner while our brushes are drying. I'm actually going to turn my heater up just a tad bit. Just a tad bit. Helps them dry better. But now they're absolutely clean and I will see you all again next time. Thanks.